Hey, welcome back everybody. It's been a while since I did a video. So today I'm painting outside. So if the camera's a little bit shaky, forgive me. It's a bit windy out here today. Um, so I'm gonna paint for you a bird that I did. Let me show you the reference. This is it right here. Okay, I did this little piece in oil. This is a six by eight. And I'm gonna do the same painting, but in acrylic just to show you the steps. So here I am with my little pochade box. This is a Gorilla painter box. This is an X six by eight. They come in different sizes. They have six by eight. Uh, I believe they have a five by seven, eight by 10 and nine by 12. They're great for outdoors. You can remove the palette this way. Uh, I'm using mostly TriArt paints and uh, a few sets of brushes. Now what you see here with this napkin deal that's going on here, uh, some people have asked me, how do I keep my paints wet while painting outside or, you know, even if I'm painting inside, I want to keep my paints wet longer. What I've done, it's a simple method, really. Where's my napkin? Oh, one second, folks. It's a simple method. Basically, I take a napkin, fold it in thirds, get it all wet under the sink, wring out the excess water, put it up here. What happens, this becomes like a wicking system. So water will keep the paints wet at all times. So that's how you keep the paint wet longer, or you could use a misting bottle. So without further ado, let's get started on this painting. Um, so here it is. Let me show it to you one more time. All right, this is what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna replicate this painting, or at least try. And I have a little canister of water in here, you know. It's nice when you're painting outside, I'll put it, put the water in a bottle like this and dump it in here. And then once I'm done, I dump this back into the bottle of water. So, you know, all right, so let's go. First, I'm gonna start out with the design of the bird. Um, let's go with the yellow ochre. So basically I have this round head's kind of flat I did a better drawing than this before let me try this again If the drawing is not perfect, I could always change it. This is why this is basically just a a sketch. Alright. So we have this part of the tail. something like this and one leg here one leg there okay so let's draw the post this leg is a little bit too far apart here let me I could fix that afterwards because this is going to be very like impressionistic and then you have this uh, waterway marker just going to really simplify this painting Yeah. 
All right, enough drawing. So now, as you can see from the reference, the bird, actually in the photo, the bird is a lot darker than the background. So I'm gonna keep my background light and the bird a little bit on the darker side. So, you know what, I'm gonna start with the clouds. I'm gonna mix a little bit of uh, white, yellow ochre. Gonna be the lightest part of the sky. Now, it won't, the painting doesn't have to be exactly like I did. Uh, on this oil painting, it doesn't have to be the same. Okay, just close enough that you get the whole idea. I got some clouds right here. Stay loose, people. Stay loose. All right, because we're going to work on this afterwards. We're really going to simplify this painting, maybe not do everything the same way. A few things might change. Okay. And remember, you know, I'm in a hot climate. I'm in Florida, so things tend to dry fast down here. So you kind of have to work fast. So now for the blue sky, I'm going to do ultramarine blue white a uh, little bit of yellow ochre maybe a little bit of burnt umber let's look how dark that's a little bit too dark so the yellow the colors that i've uh, i've pressure told you the colors i have cad yellow over here uh um yellow ochre Lizard and Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Cerulean Blue, I added because uh, I think I might need it, and Titanium White. So these are the colors. Probably gonna have to go a lot lighter. So I'm trying to keep my colors a bit muted. And remember, when you're painting with acrylics versus painting with oils, the difference is um, the blending effect. When you have one color blending into another, it really has that nice effect. When painting with acrylic, the strokes are a little bit more choppy, especially if you're trying to go an impressionistic style of painting, which is what I mainly do. Whoops. Maybe introduce some cool colors to this. If, if I was out in the field, that's how I would paint. Now I'm just going to shape the bird a little bit with my brush. Now I have a very nice sharp flat brush here. This is a number four, okay? So let me just hurry up with this, go around the bird. Now I'm mixing some yellow ochre with the ultramarine blue to give this really, uh, to make like a transition color. But as you can see here, the paint was mixing very well with um, with each other. So I got a nice gradient in oil, but this is not about oil, I understand. This is more about doing acrylics and how I would go about doing this in acrylics so I just missed 
mixed a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson. Give a variation to the sky. Now I'm just mixing some cerulean. I'm gonna work towards the base here. And I'm trying to use thick paint because um, acrylics doesn't have the same covering power as oils, as most of you may know that. Not all. And um, and the reason I keep, you know, I was adding some burnt umber to my color is to keep the colors grayed out and muted a little bit. And the reason is, you'll see, is when I put the highlights on the bird, they will stand out more. by doing so. Sorry, painting and talking at the same time. Not very easy. It's okay if I paint over some of the clouds that I did over here. The beauty of acrylics is I can really lay out the foundation fairly quickly. And go back over it fairly quickly. To where when I was doing this with oils, I had to be a little bit more careful as to what I put down and how I put it down. Go back to the yellow ochre here a little bit. Lots of white, maybe a little bit of, adding a little bit of this into that, into this mixture, just gray it down a little bit. Do the same over here. It's okay if I overlap some of what I'm doing. Warm up the sky a little bit. As you can see, the strokes are pretty choppy. Now I'm reintroducing a little bit of ultramarine blue here. Trying to transition the color a little bit. But the paint is like starting to tack up on me.
I'm introducing some cooler colors by using cerulean blue here. As you can see, I'm working really fast because uh, the weather down here in South Florida is very unforgiving. Like Mother Nature's like, I don't really care what you're working on, my friend. I got to do what I got to do. Just putting thin coats of paint. Trying to make some transition colors. Now, I did mention this was supposed to be very impressionistic. Just to give you guys a feel of what I'm doing. Putting cool against warm, warm against cool, changing the dynamics of the painting. Okay. Trying to really get the sky in so I don't have to go back and work too much with it. Trying to go back over with the approximate same colors. This goes to show you because you really try and stay loose, be worry free with your paint. Okay. Now, can I make this painting more refined? Yes, I can. I can go back over this painting, do like a lot better blending. But if I was out, you know, painting plein air, this was not my, this would not be my goal especially in a hot weather such as ours. My goal would be to paint quick, get the approximate values and um, quick representation of the scene and not so much too many details of the scene. Okay, folks, we're almost there with the bird. Let me work on this here a little bit more. This is bothering me. I'm using kind of dry brush effect. I'm not wetting my, my brush on here. 
this blending by just, just dry brushing on the colors. So now you can see that faded look that's giving. I'm going to do the same thing down here as well. So it gives a little bit of indication of possible cloud formation. Same down here. And if I don't like it, you know, it's acrylic, so I could go back over it. Now, birdie bird. Let's do the birdie bird. Okay, use the biggest brush I got. It's going to be more of a dark color, so I'm going to use a cerulean blue. A little bit of burnt umber. See how dark this is. Uh, let me use a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of white. That was a little bit too dark. Amazing when you work from acrylics from oils to acrylic the difference in how the paint works. Alright. How they each handle. And folks, remember, this is the ugly stage, okay? And then we have the wing here. I'm going to use the same color, maybe a little bit more ultramarine blue to make a darker. And it's okay because we'll go back over this. And then we're going to do the yellow underbelly. Using yellow ochre. White. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber. See how that works. Yeah, that works. Let me extend the belly a little bit lower. Right now, I'm just putting the approximate values. And remember, even if this 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 does look kind of dark, I could always go back and lighten it. Okay, these are just approximate colors for now. All right, so. this down for a second.
one of my darker colors and let's do that here as well all right let's refine the painting a little bit well let's do the post so I'm gonna use cad yellow ultramarine blue a little bit of burnt umber lay down this dark greenish color I'm just using variations of greens here. I'm not really looking at my reference photo for now. I'm just going by instinct. Shoot. I notice how I put it like a thin wash of color. Because all these striations right here are going to come to my advantage at some point are going to be an advantage. So now let's see. Let's go back to working on the bird a little bit more here. Refine the colors a little bit more. Go back over what I did. I'm using a filbert, a number four as well. You saw that color here as well. We're gonna do the beak in a minute here. rework the wings a little bit just giving like really choppy strokes to give it effect some of the effects of uh, feathers there you go rework the underbelly more yellow ochre white maybe just a little bit of blue maybe a little bit of burnt umber let's look at that that's probably too light oh my goodness sometimes you get too much All right, let's see if this works. There you go. I'm trying to keep it to the approximate value here. 
and I'm using the corner of my brush. I don't know if you guys can see this right here, the corner of it, and just giving this sweeping, sweeping strokes. So like this, and I'm trying to keep it at the same value as far as uh, when I say value, darks and lights. I'm trying to keep it equivalent, about the same. start adding some of the highlights on the bird here um, so I'm gonna go with white with just a little bit of yellow ochre to keep it on the warm side so And I'm going to blend these colors eventually. Put some highlights here as well. And then there's that. Some uh, cerulean blue, ultramarine, no, cerulean blue, burnt umber, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. Blend some of these values here. maybe a little bit cat yellow sorry I'm didn't realize I was covering all my paints here it's okay to use your thumb if you have to or your fingers Improvise here, put a little bit of feathers. Now remember, you could always improvise from your original painting, either enhance it, you know, from what it was, there's nothing that says that you can't. your painting you do what you wish
Let me extend this tail a little bit more here. I'm at an awkward angle, one second. So let's work on the beak and try to bring everything together. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, Elysian Crimson, red, uh, let's see, I'm using a uh, number two, it's a Princeton, a number two round. Do this a little bit more. I know he's got like that nice. Dark area here. Put some highlight. On that beak. Try to mix an orange color. Trying to make a transition here. So I'm trying to mix a little bit of the original color. There you go, soften it up a little bit. Soften up these edges. So basically I was mixing the cerulean blue and yellow ochre that I did over here, just to go over this dark area that I put over here, just to make like a nice uh, underbelly transition color. And actually I'm gonna use some of that color
over here as well. I'm going to fix that whole area down here. Yeah, this is this becomes a tedious part of the painting. So maybe just a little bit of cad yellow. Don't worry about using your your fingers. make a transition color here I'm using burnt umber and ultramarine blue I hope you guys can see the mixing very well Put some of that color over here to show definitions of the wings. Define the feathers a little bit more. Just like that. And if you want to soften an edge, just put water on your brush, a little bit of paint, and then just, just like that, soften that edge. Just like that. Let me put a little bit of yellow ochre on the underbelly to accentuate a little bit more. Like as if reflected light, you know. There you go. Soften that edge a little bit more. I was getting worried there a little bit that it was not going to come out like I wanted it to be. around his eye over here I said his I, I'm not sure if it was a female or a male couldn't tell it can tell you the difference so forgive me we'll call this bird gender neutral he she it who knows All right, let's fix this part right here. Ooh, too dark.
just dry brushing Put in some thick paint here so to be able to work this paint and keep it wet a little bit longer. Just dry brushing, I'm playing around here. Hold on. Okay. Let me fix the top of his head a little bit more. There you go. Because I knew his head was not that big, that round. So far, it's not coming out too, too bad, I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Did I succeed or did I fail? Uh, let me put some accents on that tail a little bit. Again, I'm at an awkward angle. Give me a second there. Give it some color. All right, let's work on this bad boy a little bit. Um, oh, legs. Give it something to stand on, right? I'm using a 
some of this color mixture here in the legs after I put in that dark, uh, these dark legs. So for the legs, I used a mix of uh, ultramarine blue, um, lizard crimson, and a little bit of um, burnt umber to make the darks first. And then I just used a little bit of this color here once this dried, which is pretty quick, and just go back over it very lightly. You don't have to put a heavy coat, just almost like a dry brush effect. Okay, you don't want to keep your brush too wet. All right, let's work on this here. So I'm gonna make it go back over just a little bit darker, darker green. I'm just, I'm not gonna put the, on the original that I did, there's the, post signs, the, the marker signs on there. I'm going to keep this simple. I really don't want to put, them, uh, put it in there. I'm not trying to be lazy. It's just uh, keep it different. You know, I want to keep it simple for this video and not keep it too long. So this was basically just to show you the process but instead of doing it in oils, I know a lot of my fans or my viewers are acrylic painters. And sometimes I do dab in my oils. I mean, I have video on oils that I do. And you could reference back on that. Put some of these markings here. Do some cerulean blue and maybe some cad yellow. Make a nice green here. You know how on these some of these posts they have like these cracks. There you go. But because the sun's coming basically kind of like this so let me just make uh, an accent like around the rim there and put some highlights Let me make some cracks in that wood. I'm gonna put some ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a little bit burnt uh, uh, lizard and crimson. Make like some cracks here, just like that. Just follow the edges and then just take them out. And 
take off the excess paint with your finger. There you go. There you go. Let me add a little bit of ultramarine blue here just to give it some cool color because it's in shadow. Let's cool it down a little bit. Fix the eye here a little bit more. All right, I think I've achieved what I came here to do. Now I'm just going to sign my name and kind of call it finished painting, really. Let me add a couple birds out there. go so excuse me there for a second just playing around here just a little bit to fix some of these birds There you go. We're going to call this painting done. If you have any comments or questions about the materials that I use or techniques that I use, or if you have any kind of critique about the painting, please leave them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer any kind of questions you may have. And uh, enjoy the process. Okay. Just a little bit more highlights around these edges here. A little bit more here. I thought I was done, but apparently not. There you go. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you on the next painting. And maybe next time we'll do a different kind of animal, like a bear or something. So thank you very much. Have a great day. And love from Florida. Now, the best part about this, when you're done painting, grab all that. And that will go to the trash. I have a little bit of paint that I use here. Just take my sprayer 
let it sit for a few seconds okay so i mean before when i bought the box i wasn't really too careful about it i just you know sanded it down or i use it both i use this both for acrylics and oils so you can see the mess that i have here but um try and be careful especially with acrylics because when when acrylics dry i mean they dry really hard on this okay so just be mindful So let me see what I can get out. I can get some of it out. Worst comes to worst, you sand it down, you know. And what you can do, you could also cut out parchment papers ahead of time and just tape it over here to keep this clean. But, um, you know as painters that are that is not our first objective to keep things clean so anywho hope you like the painting